Just like I would tell you, if you're going to do something, do it well. And leave something with you. Leave aside and let the world know that you were there. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. I am now. Okay, I am too. Biting him underneath the butt. If, Welcome back. If, if, <laughs> we always do if this. If you listen to the episode, kind of empires, kind of not, did you also hear me say, bit him underneath the butt? Biting but, him, uh, killing him by biting him underneath his yeah. butt. Please tell me. I swear it. Because Ali just can't get over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, welcome to Undercover Covet. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, I'm Ali. Uh, that's Ali. I'm Paula. And um, we are doing this in broad daylight. Finally. But, well, for certain episodes, we have to. This one is one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yes. let's start out with uh, shout outs, as always. Uh, this episode is dedicated to Peter, and it was his idea. Hi! Hi, Peter. Thank you once again. Uh, but this episode was his idea, so you can thank him. <laughs> um, also, I want to mention the Woods podcast because Sandy sent me, <laughs> not Ali, sent me <laughs> a postcard. <laughs> not me. Uh, from a haunted hotel that she passes by. <laughs> and it was honestly so surprising um, that I got it. And I didn't expect it. And it was just really cool. And th so thank you so much. I'm hey. still looking for yours because... Oh, sorry. Ale knows that all postcards here in Chile are all of the beach. And I just wanted it to be something yeah. something interesting. Mm -hmm. Did you say you are waiting for mine? No. That the oh I sent you I'll send you a postcard from Mexico ooh yay which it'll still be of the beach but like in Mexico a drunk beach with in Mexico. in Mexico it'll be a beach in Mexico um, yeah. oh we also got this amazing review yes that honestly is just Wait, like somebody's leaving are you being kidnapped no oh, okay. No, my roommate just left it. So we got a, a review from a Linda Roberts Castro uh, that said that honestly, this comp, this is like, ugh. <laughs> it said, uh, we loved it. Fascinating and entertaining. I love horror movies, the paranormal, scary folklore and general creepy stuff. So I figured I'd check this pod out. I'm so glad I did. Now I can't stop listening. They do a lot of research and they know their topics very well and they keep it funny and, er and entertaining. They're like last podcast on the left, but in much shorter episodes, which is perfect. Seriously, do yourself a favor and click the subscribe button and get listening. Oh my God. Thank you so much because I love the last podcast on the left and just to be compared to them is so cool. Yeah, that, that actually made Paula cry a little bit. I always cry. And me. I always cry. <laughs> yes, do. Also, I don't know if you got this, but we have another review, but it was from before. And it was from a person called Sing Singarara. Singarara? I didn't Singarara. Okay. I'm thinking it's Singara Singarada for some reason. But the review says it's okay. a five star <laughs> review and it says movies don't make psychos. Movies, my cycles. That's all it says. And I'm like, ooh, that's creepy, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, we have to mention a person. No, not a person. A website <laughs> that reached out yes. to us. Um, NeverGetMurdered.com. And they're raising awareness for End the, ba end the Backlog, uh, which is, you know, the whole thing with rape kits that they're not being tested. Mm -hmm. 
and they're donating 10% of each month's sales. And you can use code DEFEND50 for your first purchase and get 50% off. So Yay! DEFEND50 on nevergetmurdered.com. And they sell really cool stuff. And what type of products do they sell? They sell stuff like uh, self-defense products and like personal mm -hmm. alarms and things like that. But they make them, uh, what was it, that they make them like um, not too obvious? Yeah, they're like really subtle. For you to have in your bag? Yeah, yeah. and I think that's really cool. They have a really cute uh, personal alarm that's shaped like a wing, and you can use it like for uh, like a keychain, for example. Okay, so oh. today we're doing a um, we're doing nine one one calls. Yes, I was so excited when Peter mentioned that because I was like, "We're doing that." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but first, I'm gonna do a small review of um, Carrie Rosen's book, and uh, it's mm -hmm. called. A Serial Killer's Daughter, My Story of Faith, Love, and Overcoming, and it's by Carrie Rawson. So, Carrie Rawson is the daughter of the BTK killer. And I got this book for my birthday. I finally read it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so it starts out, like, the first half of the book, it starts uh, her writing about her childhood and the type of man her father was, according to her, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um that he was a loving husband and a father and he was like a really big God-fearing man and he went to church every Sunday and he even, he yeah. even helped out like every Sunday right there. Yeah. He was also a former Boy Scout leader and a public servant. Um, it also recalls special moments from her teenage years up until she went to college, um, when she got married, when she lost her friend. Everything is like very about her, but always yeah. with how her father um related like came into these these topics like for example they lost mm -hmm. uh, a cousin the whole family lost like a cousin and how he reacted to the whole thing etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. so the build up in the book is great because you're you're reading about some normal person's life and all of a sudden mm -hmm. the FBI at her door or her door and they're like your dad is the BTK killer Whoa. Yeah, like, the, she never suspected it, she never... Just, like, her life just took a... Really, a, a turn. big, big like, turn, big, big turn. Yeah. One day to, to the other, wow. Yeah, and, and it's, like, she realizes that her whole life is a lie, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and we often forget that this, the, the family of a serial killer is also, like, a type of victim. And mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool story like um a really cool input that we don't see a lot so I, th I thought it was really brave and and really cool of carrie rawson to write this book what i didn't like about it uh is that she mentions god everywhere like her whole thing is about finding god and there's like bible verses yeah. and and her conversations with god and things like that and i'm mm -hmm. like that's good because if if god helped you get over the fact that your dad is a serial killer like all the power to you But um, it's more like a Christian memoir than a true crime book. So yeah. if you're interested, <laughs> Jax. So if you're interested in that kind of he's awake. in that kind of thing, if you like true crime and you also enjoy God, um, you can read yeah. this book. Like honestly, and I also mm, okay. have a quote that I wanted to read that I thought was really powerful, and it says, mm -hmm. "Quote." When I was in seventh grade, I'd stayed with a friend, and her mom told us that not far from their house, someone had thrown a cinder block through a lady's sliding glass door. The lady had gone missing and was later found murdered. I remember eyeing my friend's door warily. From that time on, I, do I didn't like glass doors. Ten years later, I called Dad to ask what he thought about the place I wanted to rent. Then, four years after that, I learned he was the one who threw the cinder block through the sliding glass door I was told about in seventh grade. That door belonged to Mrs. Davis. Wow. Because he would kill people, like, around the neighborhood. And she, and she would hear about it, but never knew who he was. No, yeah. So, Dennis Rader, oh. 73 years old and serving 10 consecutive life sentences in Kansas. Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's my review of Carrie Rossen's book. Once again, it's A Serial Killer's Daughter, My Story of Faith, Love, and Overcoming. 
Hooray. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get to the 911 calls. I am yes. excited. I am terrified. I am so happy we are doing this. Wait, I'm moving in my bed. <laughs> I am so happy Sorry, my we're arm. doing this in daylight. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, there you go. I want to put this... There you go. So, go ahead. Go first. I'll go first. Okay. So, this call, um, the first one that I found, and like, I actually kind of... It just gave me so much, so much anxiety. Um, it's two teens, and I think in Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Tennessee. It's two sisters. We're home alone. One, uh, one was 16, the other one was 13. And two men were trying to get into their home like break into the house and so they hid in the bathroom um and they showed pictures like in the bathroom where they were hiding they hid like in the cupboards underneath the sink um yeah it's just listen to the call it's it's just unnerving 911 what is the address to your emergency um there's two men outside my house i think they're trying to break in and this is our home alone okay stay on the line with me i'm getting help started to you okay Okay. Can you see um, what they look like? They were knocking on the door. One has long hair, kind of, and I don't, I'm not sure about the other one. Okay. Was Were they white, black, or Hispanic? Um, I think they're white. <laughs> where Where are you inside the house? Um, we're, we're in the very back with my, in my parents' bedroom bathroom. Please hurry. Okay. I'm getting them started, Okay. Okay, so so the two men are at the back door? Yeah. Okay. I have the call set up. We do have officers that are en route to you, okay? Um, is it possible for you to close the door that you're in? Yes, it's closed. Okay. Is it a lock on that door? It doesn't close all the way. Okay. Okay, how old are you and your sister? I'm, I'm 16 and she's 13. Please hurry. Okay. I, I don't know what to do. I have, I have help on the way, okay? Um, if you can hear anything, let me know, okay? If it sounds like they got in, let me know. I want you to be quiet, okay? If they do get in, don't make any noise, okay? I want you to be quiet. Don't hang up the phone, okay? Just leave the phone where I can hear, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, a car. You can hear a car? They, they have a car. What color is the car? I'm not sure. It's loud. Okay, is the car in your driveway? They're loud. They're in the house? Are they in the house? Okay. I want you to be very quiet, okay? I'm on the line with you. I have help on the way. Okay, so that's eventually the the officers got there and they cleared out the house. Yeah. But it's so scary because they're kids. Like, do you remember when we had to call the police? Because we thought there was somebody trying to break into the house? It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's so scary, and thank God. So they were able to um, arrest the two men. Um, so one was 31, the other one was 29. They were just trying to rob their home. Um, and um, well, one of the names is Brian Tumberland. The other one is Carlos Murillo. Um, there's pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's so scary. Like, if I would have been in that position, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's just... It's just anxiety, so much anxiety. Mm. Mm. Anyways, no, but that was... I just started off a little soft though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was smart for them to like hide in the cupboard. Yeah, it's smart. I don't know what I would do, honestly. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's that's my first call. I started off a little soft. I'll get into. A little bit more scary stuff, but yeah. Uh, okay. So now me? Yeah. Okay, so 
My first one is Ruth Price. So she was mm-hmm. she was like a little freaked out because uh, there was a man asking for about her apartment. <gasps> okay. Why am I yawning now? Okay, so there was uh, a man asking about her apartment and if it was for rent. And after her encounter with the guy, she just called 911 because something seemed off. Yeah, Ruth? What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, well, there's some guy been um, checking the place out. No. Well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. And he comes to my door. And... Yes. And uh, said he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm gonna, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm-hmm. So where, where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. And that's my first call. Oh my god. That was my first call. So, uh, some people speculate that the audio is fake, but others, pe- other people think it's just too unsettling to be fake. And I think, honestly, I think it's yeah. real. I think so, too. Nobody can scream like that. Like, if it's fake. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can scream, but not... That just seemed genuine. Plus, have you heard, like, fake 911 calls? They don't sound like that. No. No. That, like, sounded, like, official. Oh, my God, it's so scary. And have you, like, if you look up her name, what does it come up? Uh, just the 911 call. Really? Yeah. But, um, no, it's just, it's scary. Like, that one is really unsettling. And honestly, it's, like, the softest one I have. That's, like, the... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> okay go ahead all right so my next one is actually linked to um a potential serial killer in ohio that was caught i believe just last year um so the call is somebody that he had kidnapped was able to get a phone and call while he was in the room with her sleeping Oh no. Nine one one, what is the address to your emergency? By the Fourth Street Laundry Mat. What is it? Fourth Fourth Street Laundry Mat. What's the problem? I found it busted. What's your name? How do you spell your last name? Who abducted you? John Green. You said John Green? Sean Greg. Where's he at now? Asleep. Where's he sleeping at? In the bedroom. In what bedroom? There's two houses right by the laundry street. And it's in one of those houses. But you're at the laundry mat? No, I'm I'm in the bedroom with them. What color is the house? Is it across? If I'm looking at the laundry mat, which way is it? If you're looking in the laundry mat, it's on the left of the two. You don't know what color the house is? No. Please hurry. Does he have a car? No. Mom, he said down the street. What's your phone number you're calling me from? I don't know. Can you think it's a yellow house? I think so, but it's on the left. Is it an apartment? No, it's a house. Okay, does he own the house? No, he broke into it. Does anybody actually live there? I think they've been abandoned. 
And his name is Sean Great. Yes. Like G R A T E. Yes. Does he have a weapon? Where do you live? What does he look like? Is he a white male or a black male? White. Is he like six foot or is he shorter than that? He's like six one, six two. Do you know how much he weighs? Probably one seventy five. Are you injured? his hair? Brown. Do you know what color his eyes are? No. What's he wearing? Nothing right now. Okay, stay in the home with me. Stay in the line with me, okay? I'm not going to play you the whole thing. It's like 15 minutes. Um, but I think the person was just trying to keep her on the phone. Um, while they were like trying to look for the location. Because she didn't know where she was. They were in an abandoned house. Mm -hmm. um, so she kept saying. The beginning of the call. She's talking really, really low. Because he's on the in the room with her. Right. So she's saying, no, I was tied up. But I freed myself, right? Right. Um, and he, she didn't want to go open the door. Because he had done something to it so it will make noise if she would open it mm. right so what happened is that this sean gray guy um they found i believe um two more bodies like dead bodies inside of the house when they finally um came in and one of them was of stacy stanley who had been missing for a couple of weeks and wait let me see Um, so they found two, uh, two more dead bodies of two, two women, women inside of the house. Um, one of them was Stacey Stanley. She had been missing for a couple of weeks. And then her son um, uh, gave her, like an interview or something. Anyways, the, the whole... Um, um, they haven't revealed the, the, who the girl was who called. She's still um, a Jane Doe or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there is... You can look at Sean Gray's trial online and you'll see like there is everything was was televised not televised but there's videos of everything and um him confessing as to why he killed the people like he killed about like maybe five women um he was just bad one of her one of his ex-girlfriends actually um did an interview like when everything was happening she was like yeah he was like very abusive abusive with me he like pushed me punched me a couple times when we were going out and like eventually had to leave him he was like a violent guy oh my god i know that's so scary that's scary yeah <clears throat> but like you know what scares me is that the girl called she didn't know whose phone she was using True. and she was he was right there with her like he could have woken up woken up and just killed her technically she's so brave so brave i know ah boy so, me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this call is known around the internet as only Karen, why are you here? That's the name of the, the call. Uh, so, Karen was at home with her baby mm -hmm. when she heard someone trying to get into her house. And then she called 911. Baby. 
and that's my second call. So, uh, she was raped, and her baby okay. was killed with a hammer. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Wait, she was left alive? Yeah. What the hell? Did they ever find that person? No. Uh, it's only known, like, no. there's no info on who did it because it's only known as Karen, why are you here? It's, like, very anonymous. Wow. That's so scary. Yeah. Yeah. Just the, I, the sounds of her screams honestly gave me so much anxiety. She's like, why yeah. are you here? Why are you here? Like, I can just imagine her. She was, no, she was. I can just imagine her, like, backed up in a corner, just, like, screaming at a guy who is not saying anything. That's the thing. It's like you cannot hear him at all. I don't think he was saying anything. I just think he just broke in and just Michael Ma- at Michael her. Myers, the whole thing, and just, yeah. yeah. Eww, so gross. Mm. So scary. Okay, so my next call is... Andrew Graham Wallace, which if you look that up on YouTube or Google, it won't, nothing will come out of it, which is kind of weird. But this guy is spending his um, the rest of his life in prison because he called 911 to tell them that he killed his mom and his nephew. Oh, okay, fun. 911, what's the location of your emergency? It's uh, 18892 Palm Springs. Uh, cancel that. 18892 Indian Springs. Okay, what's going on there? I just shot my mother and my... You shot your mother? I committed a double homicide. Okay, you shot your mom and who? Uh, my, uh, nephew. Okay. Now, um, what happened? I lost my mind. Okay, what's your name? My name is Adrian Graham Wallace. Okay. Do you know if they are, um, are they alive at this point? I don't think so. I shot them multiple times. Okay. Fuck, I just committed a murder. Okay. Where are you right now, sir? My home. Okay. What was my home. Okay. Wasn't going to be my home. What did you shoot them with? A three oh eight rifle. Where is that gun now? That's really on the ground. Where at? Murderers do. Okay. Where did you Where did you put it? Through on the ground. Okay. Outside or? It's near the homicide scene. Okay. Where Where exactly is that? Is, is it inside the house or? Outside. Okay. In the back of the house or the front of the house? In the front of the house. Okay. And are you inside now? I'm ready to surrender. Okay. Are I don't you, are give you... a shit about this life anymore. I don't care. Okay, well, I, I don't want you to do anything to yourself, okay? I don't want you to kill yourself. Yeah, I know. You want your case. No, no, sir. That's, not, case. that's not what Good. I'm getting at. Great. Fine. Wonderful. Okay. Are, are you inside or outside? I'm smoking a cigarette in the garage. Okay. My last cigarette, I suppose. Are you armed at all now? I don't really respect your cops at all. But, no, if okay. they uh, treat me with respect, okay, but... I'll go ahead and be a prisoner. That's fine. Okay, you're, so you're not armed with any weapons any longer? No. Okay. Is anybody else there with you? No. Okay. Um, can I ask your date of birth, sir? I don't remember. It's, okay. Uh, nine, 1971, I think. Okay. You, so you said that you, you went crazy, you had some kind of mental break? Well, I'm going to open the garage door. I can't believe I did what I did. Okay. I, I want to I help you as much as I can, okay? So whatever whatever you No, need, I did what I did. No, I, I know, but any People have been killed. Okay. It's, uh, it's a criminal act. I committed a crime. Okay. People are dead. They're not moving around. Okay. We don't know that we might be able to help them still. People are dead. Okay. This is it. Okay. I believe you. Oh, you didn't have it coming. Fucking 
scumbag. What, what, what brought this on? Well, multiple repeated fucking crimes, child abuse, shit like that. Okay. A against you? Why are you asking me this stuff? Just fucking arrest me and throw me in a cage. Uh, I, sir, I'm, 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 sending, I'm sending people to come help you, okay? Help me. Yes, they're, they're on the way to come help you, okay? Hello? I just committed a double fucking I, I, homicide. I, I understand. There's no help. I, You're just trying to protect your officers. Where are they? They're, they're I'm coming, surrendering. They're coming as fast as they can, sir. You don't do what I did and get away with it. That's against the law. I surrender. Just give me a fucking cop. I surrender. That's how it is. They're, they're coming as fast as they can. I promise you that, okay? If you're going to act like you're personally interested, I was an abused child. My scumbag family lied and lied and lied about it. And uh, I just snapped. Okay. I just couldn't take the lies no more. You're tapping on your keyboard. I can hear that. Yes, because I, like I told you, I'm sending officers out there to come help you, okay? And I'm trying to get them to come there as fast as they can. They are driving as fast as they can right now to you. I promise you that. Well, just fucking kill me because I'm not going to kill myself. It's, okay, you know, we, we don't want to kill you either. Yeah, you do. No, sir, I, I do not want to kill you, and none of those officers want to kill you either. So the tone that he's using... That's how customers talk to us. That's what this said set me off so much because that's how, like, a very, he's using a very condescending tone on her, and she, all she wants is just make sure that he doesn't hurt anybody else right. or himself. But he's like, ah, you just want your case. You just want to arrest me. Of course they want to arrest you. They're not going to let you go skipping. <laughs> but she needs to keep you on the phone. It's her fucking job. Let her do her job. Fucking asshole. Read that in the handbook or something? No, I, I, I'm serious. I'm being serious with you. I'm being dead honest with you. What part of double homicide do you not understand? I, I know that you I'm had, the bad guy. I, now. I know that you had to be hurting to do what you I did. I used to be the good guy. I used to help people. I, I know. Now that you I'm had the to be fucking serious. murderer. I just killed two people. Okay. I I understand. I, I I understand that you have done something horrible. Do you understand that I just killed two people? Yes, I do. I'm, I I'm used to be you. the good guy. I used to help people. Then a bunch of so tell me about yourself scumbags discriminate against me, made me impossible to employ. These motherfuckers betrayed me for the last goddamn time. I'm part of a pa family that no, I, you know, fucking child molester scumbags. I agree. I agree. And. Like I said, uh -huh, yeah, uh, nine one one operator stuff. Sir, no, that's not what I'm. That's not what I'm doing. What you're trying to do is keep me on the phone, so the cops can sneak up on me. No, they're, they're, they're not going to sneak up mother. on me. You understand? I they're not. Shot my they're mother not going to sneak up head. on you. They they know that you know. I I told I told them that 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 you are yeah, aware that they're coming. The okay. So the conversation just goes on and keeps going on about just him being condescending to her. Because she's trying to do her job. Um, and I understand. I mean, you just killed two people. That, I don't know. Like, I've seen, like, the... I've seen news reports and stuff about it. I think at the very end, they kind of talk about, like, the grandma and the and the nephew. Um, and they, it, it doesn't... It didn't look like they deserve to die. Mm. Of course they didn't. Who Nobody deserves to die. Um, he just had like a mental breakdown and he killed him and he's like, I don't know, whatever. Um, but he's such an ass about it. He's such an ass about it. Like, he's not sorry. A hundred percent he's not. Um, I think they were, he was going to get, um, the death penalty and they were able to, so he, he agreed to spend his, um, his life in jail. Hmm. So they... They waived the, the death penalty, but still, like, I don't know. I just, the, the whole thing kind of sets me off a little bit because she's literally just trying to do her job. And she's trying to make sure that, of course, she's trying to keep her cop safe. Of course. He could have another weapon for all and then just go south. Right. For a second time, right? For all they know. So, 
And he's just being like so like entitled and just condescending about it that it's just like I hate I hate, just hate it. That's why I put this call here because it just set set me off. And I hope he rots in jail. So, but I just hate his attitude. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody who's who kills another person is just like, huh, I killed him. I had a mental breakdown. Eh, okay, just just come take me. I surrender. Just hurry up. It's weird. It's weird. That call's weird. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. No. I don't like it either. I hate it. But I had to put it. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Okay, so my last call. Uh, why do I why do I yawn now that I'm talking? <laughs> Okay, so my last call is Michelle Hall. So Michelle had been in an accident, and she was confined to her couch, and she could not move. Um, she heard pounding on her door, and her dogs went absolutely crazy. And you can even hear them in the call, um, in the 911 mm-hmm. call. According to her, they only did that when there were strangers around. I'm scared for her. 911, where is your emergency? on the pool table mm-hmm. and you can hear her pleading in the audio and the police thankfully arrived and arrested the guy but mm-hmm. um 
you can hear her in the audio like pleading for her life. Yeah. And you can hear the dogs barking in the background. Well, yeah. But um uh, yeah. She was they didn't make it like on time for not for her not to be raped, but at least they made it. Oh my god, that's so scary. So he just started pounding and then he just broke into the house? Yeah. So he knew she was in there and not able to move. Probably. Probably. Did they say who the guy was? Yeah, but I don't have his name. Michelle. Like, was it a neighbor? What oh, no. Was it? it was a stranger. It was like a complete stranger. There's a lot of articles on it all for, for some reason. Um, no. They, I don't, it was a, a guy, but I don't, I don't know his face. I don't have his face. Or his name. But yeah. Uh, it's creepy. That is really creepy. And she was like really lucky to be able to, to get up and, and go to the phone and call and stuff. But yeah, it's sad that um, they didn't make it in time. They didn't make it in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so scary. I get so anxious when I listen to these because since I spend the majority of my time alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I always think about, like, the Ted Bundy um, murders from the um, the sorority house. And I think about how he climbed into, like, the windows. Mm. And I'm like, literally, if they wanted to, like, anybody could get anywhere. Oh, ob- obviously. 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 Yeah, and I always think about that because I'm like, what if like they, somebody tries to get into my window? I think about Richard Chase, and I always leave everything locked. <laughs> well, you used to keep your your kitchen door open all the time. But that wasn't me, that was my parents. I hated it so yeah, much. True. I hated it so much. I never understood that. Like, that didn't really scare me until um, that time when the lights went out in your house. Yeah. And we were the three of us alone. Yeah. And then we remember that, oh, your kitchen window is always left open. Yeah. I know. I hated it. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Thank you, Peter, for suggesting this amazing, yes. no, no, no anxiety here episode. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. I'm not going to close my door right now and lock it i'm i'm okay no i should probably lock my door it's okay i'm home alone oh i should probably lock my door she's like i remember at the end last episode she was like well at least you have your dogs and i'm like yeah these little the little critters one is <laughs> one is like right now sleeping on my lap <laughs> one just sleeps and the other one is satan's dog so yeah the other one is lucifer's child so <laughs> me uh yeah so anything else no oh we have a pet of the week we do we do (laughs) i know we were sent a bunch of pictures okay wait no i have to check this out because i found a bunch on Mm. on instagram I think it was. It's in our email. Oh, yeah, I know. I saw that one. Okay, so... But I feel like we're missing something before that. But it's okay. That's the one we have now. Next one. So... We were asking for birds. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, Kim, Kim from the Dark Rose Pod, uh, her subject line was, not a bird, but... <laughs> So it's a kitty cat. Yeah, it says it is. This is the cat my my dad adopted that hangs out at his restaurant. His name is Catfish. Aww. He's adorable. He sits behind the register, and he wears a tie. Okay, so this is actually one of the cutest cats. I know. Just I mean not not even like just the cutest cat because I feel like all cats are cute, but it's just very photogenic. Yeah, he's, like, posing for the camera. Yeah, like, he knows. And, like, both pictures, which we're going to post on our Instagram, but it's just, like, it's just... I absolutely love... Very photogenic cat. 
I absolutely love that he sits uh, at the restaurant and he has a little tie on. It's just so cute. I know. Oh my god. We should have and catfish. And I guess it's a seafood restaurant because there's a thing made out of shells at the back. Yeah. Like clam shells. I think so. Yeah. So the fact that his name's Catfish is just so it's cute. perfect. We should have a, a a separate podcast where we just review animals and we would give them all 10 out of 10 because they're all cute. 15 out of 10. 15 out of 10. 15 out of 10. I got the hiccups. <laughs> okay, so... It's so cute. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kim, for your submission. And if you have a pet that you would like to uh, be famous, have your pet be famous for a week, uh, send us an email at um, undercovercoven at gmail.com or on Instagram or Twitter at undercovercoven. And yeah, have a great week, everybody. And I don't know what else to say. Have a great week. <laughs> I feel like we're... I'm sorry. It's it's Friday. I feel like every Friday we say we're tired, but we truly are this week. <laughs> I'm not that tired. I think you're tired, but I'm not, oh, I I'm not that tired. <laughs> you know that? That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. a change from my usual uh, drowsiness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, despite the fact that you were yawning the entire episode <laughs> I know you're gonna make me yawn again <sighs> <laughs> did you yawn which is did... a good sign it means we're not sociopaths <laughs> I wonder if our listeners yawned as well did you yawn tell us on Instagram <laughs> please <laughs> um yeah I just I hope you guys have a great week and um since this is Friday I hope you had a good weekend and you celebrated whatever it is that you're celebrating. We celebrate. Doesn't have to be anything specific. Just celebrate that you are um, alive. Alive. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.